Today, I'm celebrating five years at Amazon. After you spend five years at Amazon, you get upgraded to gold tier, AKA the sweet yellow badge from the regular blue badge that everyone gets after you join Amazon. But I started my career in mainframe. I was stuck in a full-time job working with outdated technology that I did not enjoy and I desperately wanted to transition into the role of a solutions architect. I would go to my desk every day, not motivated and working on things that felt like a painful chore. I was in my 30s and the career switch felt very scary. On one hand, I was in a job where I knew people and felt comfortable. But on the other hand, my salary was not growing much. To make matters worse, I saw others with less technical knowledge than me landing solutions architect jobs. So how did I do it? How did I even survive five years at Amazon? Heck, how did I even get in? Do I recommend Amazon to others? Let's find out. For those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Raj and currently I am an L7 Principal Solutions Architect at AWS. I have led world-scale projects worth millions of dollars. If you live in the US, you have certainly used at least one application that I have designed on AWS. I have presented at the largest cloud conferences all over the world, such as AWS reInvent, KubeCon, and AWS Summits. As a matter of fact, when you are watching this video, I'll be on a plane going to France from the USA to present at a conference. And in 2023, LinkedIn named me top systems design voice. But above all that, I have gotten to work with the most incredible and intelligent people. The saying, iron sharpens iron holds true in Amazon. I have grown tremendously from the strengths of my colleagues. But not everything was hunky-dory. I joined AWS where everyone is a superstar. Every new solutions architect who joins AWS goes through a process called Awesome Builder, where you build a project and as part of this process, you have to literally whiteboard that system design in front of other veteran SAs. You have to explain it, answer their questions, etc. I faced a harsh reality. In my previous company, I was going deep in specific areas of my project. But at AWS, I had to go deep in multiple services and not just specific challenges. I barely passed Awesome Builder, but I had major imposter syndrome. I surely thought I would get fired because I thought I was not good enough to work at AWS. But I exercised the same principle that have helped me get into AWS. The master has failed more times than the beginner has ever tried. I kept learning, took trainings, followed all the tips my mentor gave me and kept practicing. And soon enough, my imposter syndrome started turning into confidence. Shout out to my awesome mentor, Simon Rice. If you want to get in Amazon, it is important to understand this next part. People often ask me, how does it feel working at Amazon? How are the teams like? Think teams at Amazon as sports team competing for the Super Bowl or the World Cup. We perform at the highest level, design world-scale architectures, and in the process, have lots of fun. Think of your favorite sports team. Is it a lot of work to stay in shape and discipline to perform at the highest level? Yes but as a reward, you participate in truly amazing projects. And like any high-performing sports team, we help each other improve. I have made friendships that would last my entire life. Coming from mainframe, I never dreamt of working in projects with such widespread impact. I am both humbled and energized by that. If you have that mindset, you will not only survive, but thrive at Amazon. So if I work backwards from all of these, we have the pathway to get into Amazon. You have to keep building up your body of work in your current company to get AWS recruiters attention. You can extend your knowledge in AWS 
related to your current area. For example, if you work in database, then learn how to migrate on-premises data to AWS. What are the different databases on AWS, their advantages, etc. Then do proof of concepts on those and save them in GitHub. Any solutions architect needs to follow the T model where we need to have a breadth of knowledge in the fundamentals and then go deep on core areas of your competency. You also need to know how to present your solutions. You should learn how to give presentations like an essay to nail any interview and succeed in your job. As an essay, you need to be a trusted partner and not a superior. You should be able to explain your system design to both the executive and technical audience. Remember that essays don't have anyone reporting to them, yet we influence a large audience. You need to keep learning new things and keep adding them to your LinkedIn profile. And here is the kicker. Even if you don't get into Amazon as fast as you wanted, you can still get into other top companies in AWS role if you do these things. I still cannot believe I switched from mainframe to the most cutting edge technology company in the world. In my previous life, I spent a lot of time doing analysis paralysis which subject to pick, which college to pick, which programming language is best, which IT domain should I learn to get the highest advantage, should I try this new thing, etc. And looking back, I realize how much time I wasted. No matter how many people you ask, no one can answer which cloud will have the best pay in five years, or which technology domain will have the highest number of jobs or which exact tools will have highest adoption. So here lies the lesson. If you feel stuck in a career or in a legacy technology you do not like, you also can transition to the cloud. You just need to stop analysis paralysis, pick a path, pick a cloud, and just get started.